Okay, this video is to cover module 28. And so it starts off with graphing a parabola of the form y equals x squared plus bx plus c. It says plot the vertex and then two um, points on each side of the vertex. Now, ideally what you want to do is you want to... Uh, find out what that peak is okay right that's the vertex and then you want to graph it now one of the ways to do that is to change it into the transformation form right so if you can change it so that it looks like this right or I shouldn't put C because it won't be the same value then it's just a regular parabola that is shifted over horizontally, vertically, and then has a um, stretch factor, right? Um, since this problem doesn't have an A, there is no A here. So really what we're looking for is we're looking for an equation that fits this form. Now there is a formula to find these values really easily. Now I could do the entire process of completing the square to find those values, but I'm going to show you a shortcut as well. So I'm going to do it in two different ways, and then from then on I'm kind of kind of use the little shortcut that I get, okay? So the first way to do this is to take the equation and take the right hand side, separate it, And so to complete the square here, you're going to take half of positive 6 and square it, which gives me positive 3 squared, which gives me 9. So to complete the square, I need to add 9. But so that I don't change the value of this expression or this side of the equal sign, I'm going to also minus 9. Okay. So then this part should give me what's in the parentheses, x positive 3 squared. Okay. And then this side, if I combine these two numbers, I'll get negative 6. So now I have this in the correct form that it needs to be as far as like transformations. So a parabola that you would have centered here at the um, origin is now going to get moved to the left 3 units. And then it's going to get shifted down 6 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's going to be here. Okay. And you could do the same thing you were doing to find the other points, right? So if you take the point um, 1 and 1 and 2 and 4, those points as well, and you shift them around, you should be able to find the other two points as well. Okay. So let's see what happens when we shift those. So when I take the point 1, 1, right, I'm going to have to go left 1, 2, 3, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I get this point here. Then the point 2, 4 has to go left 1, 2, 3, and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so you end up with this point here. Uh, and so then I can't draw very well, but you get the idea. And then on the other side, you could do the same thing for negative 1, 1, and negative 2, 4, and you'll get the other side, the other two points that you need for the rest of the graph, okay? Um, or you can make a table. Knowing that negative 3 is the x value in the center here, you can pick two values to the left of it like negative 4 and negative 5, and then two values to the right, like negative 2 and negative 1. Plug each of these numbers into this equation, and you'll get their y values. So that's 2 squared, which is 4, negative 2. Negative 1 squared, so I get negative 5. Um, 0, so I get negative 6. That would give me 1 squared, so I get negative 5. That would give me 2 squared, so I get negative 2. 
and so you have your list of points here okay but what you start off with is the vertex which is what you get from this situation here h comma k is the vertex okay it's the opposite sign there so notice that even though it's positive my vertex is at a negative three and then a negative six okay now I can shortcut that I had to complete the square here in order to get this and this the two parts I needed to know where my center was going to be right where that vertex was going to be um, so shortcut is is there's a formula to calculate H it's negative B over 2a and then once you have H if you want to find K you just plug that number into your function or into your equation okay and you'll be able to find the y value or the k value so here if I were to look at my my equation here in this particular case a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 6 positive 6 so h in this case would be negative 6 over 2 times 1 which is negative 6 over 2 which is negative 3 and if I want to find k, all I have to do is plug negative 3 into the original problem. And that will give me the y value. So I get 9 minus 18 plus 3, which equals negative 6. And so notice I got the same values. I got negative 3 for h and negative 6 for k. That's the exact same values we have here. And then you just pick two x values to the left of that x value and two values to the right of that x value and you'll get all the points that they're expecting you to plot on each side of the vertex okay so let's try that with a different example now that we know a shorter way to do it right um and we'll be able to get our points to be able to graph our parabola so for this example we're just going to say h equals negative b over 2a which in this case is negative 4 over 2 times 1, which is 2. And k is what I get when I plug 2 into my um, function here. And so we get 4 minus 8 is negative 4, minus 5 is negative 9. So that means in my chart, I'm going to have here in the middle 2 and negative 9, and then I need to pick two values less than 2. So here's two, pick two numbers less, so like zero and one, and then two values bigger, which like three and four. And then if I plug zero in here, I get negative five. If I plug one in here, I get one minus four, which is negative three minus five, which is negative eight. If I plug in three, I get nine minus 12, which is negative three, negative five, I get negative eight. And if you plug in four, you get negative five. Okay, so those are all the points that I would graph on my um, in Alex and then hit the parabola button and you have everything you need to graph that parabola. Now here is another um, problem. Now notice that it's already in that form that we talked about earlier. Okay, and this time you do have an A value in the very front. But what's nice about this is that they've already put it together for us. So literally we don't have to find h and k we just have to pick out h and k so remember for h it's going to be the opposite sign in there and for k it's going to be the exact same sign here so this is h this is k and then when you're making your chart that's the middle guy pick two numbers um, lower than that two numbers higher than that and then plug them into that equation so this part I'm going to speed through. You can use your calculator or you can calculate it in your head. However it is you calculate, that's fine. So I'm going to get negative 2 squared is 4, negative 8. I'm going to get negative 12 here, negative 1, 1, negative 2. So I get negative 6, 4, negative 2, negative 6, and then 2 squared is negative 8, negative 4 is negative 12. Okay, and then you would plot those in your... Um, Alex and then you would hit the number graph okay and there's two ways to plot them you can either uh, click on the dot and then put the dot place it somewhere on the graph or you can um, just hit the button that looks like this right the little X and then you can just type in the coordinates negative 1 and negative 12 
and it'll plot it for you. However you get the dots on there, but after you get the dots, then you hit the, the icon to graph. Here, my H is gonna be negative two, my K is gonna be a positive one. So then when I set up my chart, negative two goes in the middle. Two numbers less than negative two are negative three and negative four. And then two numbers greater than negative two would be negative one and zero. So then we plug all these in here. And I made an error. This should be a square. I left off the square for some reason. So then two squared is negative two squared is four, 12, so that's 13. Negative three, that's one. Three plus one is four. Negative two, I get zero, so one. Um, negative one, I get one, which is four. And then zero, I get two squared, which is four, 12, 13. And so again, you would plot those points and then draw the parabola um, icon. Click on the uh, parabola icon. Here we have graphing a parabola in this form. And so just like before, it helps if we get it to look like this form. You already know what A is. This A is the exact same A that's there, but you just have to figure out what H and K are. So we have a shortcut for that. H is negative B over 2A. So negative 8, positive 8, over 2 times positive 2. So we get negative 8 over 4, which is negative 2. K is what we get when we plug in negative 2 for X. So that is positive 8 minus 16, that's negative 8 plus 5, we get negative 3. So our center is negative 2, negative 3. And again, if you're wanting to graph it, put negative 2, negative 3 in the middle, and then pick numbers on both sides. And so then we plug each of these things in there. Now this is a little bit harder to plug, so I am going to use the calculator here. Um, I just noticed my light bulb's not on. There we go, that helps with the calculator. So let's store negative 4 as x, and then we're going to start 2x squared plus 8x plus 5. So we get 5, negative 3, store x, copy that. Negative 1, negative 1 store x, plug it in, negative 1, and then 0 store x, and we get 5, okay? And then you plot each of those points, connect the dots, and it'll draw that parabola for you. Over here, I'm going to do the same thing, negative b over 2a. So in this case, b is negative 12, and a is negative 3. So then we get a positive 12 on top, a negative 6 on bottom, so then a negative 2 in the end. And then for the k, we're going to plug in this value. And so I'm going to do negative 2 store x, and then I'm going to start plugging in negative 3x squared minus 12x minus 9. And I get positive 3. Then you make your chart. In the middle, you're going to have negative 2 and positive 3. Pick two values less than negative 2. Pick two values greater than negative 2. And then start going to town and plugging these guys in. So negative 9. So that programming feature of your calculator really does help so that things can go by really quick when it comes to computing out these values. And then once you plot all these on the graph, you hit the graphing function uh, button and it'll plot your parabola for you. Um, these are the same thing. The only problem is, is that now you have fractions, but luckily for us, we have a calculator, right? So the fraction shouldn't be that big of a deal. So H is going to be negative B over 2A still. So negative 12 over 2 times negative 3 halves. And this is actually easier than it looks. You get negative 12 at the bottom and you get negative three, I mean, negative 12 at the top and negative three at the bottom. So in the end, you ultimately end up with four for H. For K, you gotta plug in four. So we're plugging in four into our function. And so let's see, um, four stores X and I'm gonna hit negative three halves um, x squared plus 
x minus 36. So we get negative 12. And then you make your chart. And now you put four in the middle. Two less than four would be three and two. Two more would be five and six. You already know this y value. And then start finding the other y values. Now I'm going through this process really quick um, because I have done this before already. Okay, I've already shown in a different video how to um, program your calculator so that you can get your y values pretty quickly. So if you haven't um, watched that video before, then this might be going a little bit too fast. But essentially what you do is you plug in your first x value by picking that x value and then store button, which is right here, and then the x. This is the variable button. Okay, this is uh, variables above it. And you hit enter to like save. So now x is, is a four. Then you type in your expression with x's and all it does is it makes those x's that are there a four. So when you go back to copy it, whatever you last stored is x, that's what it's gonna plug in there. So notice when I plugged in four, I got negative 12. If I wanna pick another number to plug it in, I would have to hit that number three store as x and then save that. So now that is the new x value, which is why all I've done is gone up to the previous time I typed this function and hit enter to copy it and then hit enter again to actually compute it. So it's now computing it, but with three plugged in for x, okay? We're gonna do the same thing for the other side. So remember h is negative b over two a in this case, we get negative 8 thirds over 2 times negative 4 thirds. And in this case, you can't reduce. You can simplify your signs, but here you're going to get negative 8 over 3. We're lucky here in the fact that I know an 8 over 3 and 8 over 3 is 1. Positive over negative is a negative. So that I could do in my head. But if you couldn't, you can do this in your calculator. You can say um, fraction to start this fraction. And then say 8 over 3 for the top, and then negative 8 over 3 for the bottom. And so it looks exactly like it does on my paper, and when I hit enter, it does simplify for it. So if it's not something you can do in your head like I did, um, just type it in your calculator and you'll still be able to get that uh, value. And then remember for k, we've got to plug k in. So the first thing I'm going to do is store k as my x value, because that's what I'm going to plug in for x. And then let's start going to compute. So negative 4 over 3 x squared minus 8 over 3 x. Notice that I'm not plugging in the negative 1 because I'm using the programming capability to do my calculator. I've already programmed x to be negative 1, so I'm only using x's here. And I get 3. So then that means when I set up my chart, I'm going to have negative 1 in the middle and 3 over here that goes with it. Then two values to the left of it would be negative two and negative three, zero and positive one. And so now we start using that functionality of our calculator to calculate. Now this point, when you have fractions like that, you do have to use that button that allows plots the points for you. Um, you won't be able to eyeball where that belongs. So these points, you will have to hit that button that has the little X so that you can just type in the negative three and type in the negative seven thirds. Um, it just won't allow you to do it any other way. Oops, that was wrong. One stores X and then go back and highlight your function and plug it in. And so once you have all of these plotted, you can hit the graphing button and it'll draw your parabola for you. Now here it says rewriting the quadratic function to find its vertex and sketch the graph. This is literally what we've been doing already. They're just now asking you for this information. Before, all we were doing was this, and we were actually doing that as well, right? That's the H and the K. The only thing we hadn't done is this step. And what this step is, is they want the A minus H squared plus K written out right there. Okay, so for the most part, for both of these, I already know what this value is, the A. 
On this problem, it's 2. And on this problem, it's negative 3. What I don't know is what the h and the k are. Okay? So for this problem, if I want to find h, negative b over 2a, negative positive 8, 2 times 2, negative 8 over 4, which is negative 2, and then k is whatever I get when I plug in negative 2. And again, I'm going to use my calculator, but I'm going to use the um, programming capability, so I get 1. So then that means that my vertex equals negative 2 for h, 1 for k. My function, my function actually equals, um, a, this is a, so 2 parentheses x minus negative 2 squared plus 1. And then these double negatives can be written as a plus sign. Okay? And so then you end up with this expression here. So there's your vertex, that's one part of the answer. Here's your function, that's the other part of the answer. And then remember how we get the graph, right? You put your vertex negative 2, 1 in the middle there, pick two values smaller, pick two values greater, and then start plugging them in to find your y values. So we'll go ahead, I get 9, I get 3, I get 3, and I get 9. Okay, and then again, you would plot these points, hit the graphing button, and it would your parabola for you. Over here it's very similar so I'm gonna find h first negative b over 2a negative negative 30 over 2 times negative 3 so I get 30 over negative 6 which is actually equal to a negative 5. For k I'm gonna plug in that negative 5. So negative stores x and I'm gonna use function negative 3x squared minus 30x minus 68 and I get 7. So then my vertex is going to be um, h comma k. My function is going to be a is negative 3 at the beginning. x minus a negative 5 which turns it to plus 5 and then a positive 7 on the outside. If this were negative 7, this would be minus 7, okay? And then to graph it, we do the same thing as before. So put the negative 5, 7 in the middle. Then two values less than negative 5, two values greater than negative 5, and start plugging these things in, right? So negative 5. And then 4. and then negative five. And then you would plot these points here and then you would click on the button to draw your parabola. Okay, now we've got some word problems here involving maximum and minimum. Remember, maximum is if I have a parabola that looks like this, it would be the vertex at the top. Minimum is when my parabola looks like this and it's the point at the bottom, okay? So really it's just a vertex is what I'm trying to find. The hard part is gonna be, do they want H or do they want K for the answer, okay? So this value is the max or min value. This is where the max or min occurs. Okay, so there's two different things. This is the actual value. That's the height, right? That tells you how high or how low um, the peak or the valley goes. So this is the max or minimum value. This just tells you where that peak or value is occurring. Like, is it over here in positive 5x value? Is it over there to the left in the negative 3x value? Where does that um, maximum or minimum occur? 
So it says a ball is thrown vertically upward after t seconds. Its height h in feet is given by the function h of t equals all of this. What is the maximum height that the ball will reach? Do around your answer. So they want to know what that height is. And that means they want to know what the y value is, which means they want to know k. But you can't find k until you find h, right? So what we need to do is first I'm going to write this so that it's in the correct order. I'm going to put my negative t squared term in the front and my positive 108 t at the back, right? It has to be in descending order before you can pick out what a, b, and c are. So to find, and it's confusing because they use h here for height and we're used to using h for the vertex, right? So here height means the y value. Here it's just an h, okay? So if it confuses you to use h again, just remember this is an x value, right? So we'll just say x equals negative b over 2a. So it's really the h of the vertex. Okay, so negative, and in this case, b is actually a positive 108 and a is a negative 16. So we get negative 108 over negative 32 which is not a nice answer. We get 27 over eight as an answer, okay? But that's not really what they're wanting. What they're wanting is K, and K is what you get when you plug that value in. So let's plug that value in. Um, negative 16, parentheses, fraction 27 over 8, close the parentheses, square it, plus 108, parentheses, 27 over 8, close the parentheses. We get 729 over 4, or if I hit the decimal button, it says 182.25. It says do not round, so you can use both. Now, had this been something like 11 over 3, you can't write that as a decimal because 11 over 3 is this repeating decimal and you're not allowed to round it, right? So if you get something like this where it ends up being something like that, you can't round it. So you can't put it in its decimal form. You would have to keep it in its fraction form. For here, we got lucky because it was in quarters. So we had a nice decimal, so we could write our answer as a decimal. Let's try this other one. It says Aldo has 180 meters of fencing. He will use it to form three sides of a rectangular garden. The fourth side will be along a house and will not need fencing. One of the sides has length X meters. And, it's, and it gives you an image here, okay? Find a function that gives you the area of X of the garden if the square in square uh, meters in terms of x. Okay, so we know that we have a 280 meters of fencing. Now remember what fencing is. Fencing is going to go a lot around the perimeter, right? You're just not going to put any fencing here, okay? So I don't know what this is. I'm just going to call it y, but I know these two sides are parallel to each other and they're equivalent to one another. So I know that my perimeter is going to equal um, two X's plus a Y. I know how much the perimeter is or how much fencing it is that I have. I have that much fencing. So what I can do is I can minus two X on both sides. And now I have an expression for this side in terms of X. So now this sides are in terms of X and this side is in terms of X, okay? And if I want to find the area, all I have to do is multiply the two things together. So if I want to find the area, I'm going to take my length times my width. And then you can distribute this and you get A equals 280X minus 2X squared. And that's exactly what they're expecting here. Okay. And it says, what is the side length X? that gives a maximum area of the garden. So now I've got to figure out that X value for the garden, right? Now remember, the X value is the H. So H equals negative B over 2A. 
B in this case, this is not in the correct order, right? A is equal to negative 2 squared positive 280x. So B is actually a positive 280 and A is a negative 2. So you get negative 280 over negative 4, which is negative 70. I should have known that. Or positive 70, I'm sorry. Negative divided by negative is positive. And so then that's the x value that they're looking for here. Then it says, what is the maximum area that the garden can have? Well, now they want to know what a is. So plug this 70 in for x. So let's see what we get there. Negative 2, 70 squared plus 280 times 70. The area would be 9,800. And it is in square meters, right? They told me area is in square meters. Here, this is just meters. Topic we have here it says the range of a quadratic function so there's only two things that can happen with the quadratic the quadratic can either open upward like this and in which case the vertex which is h comma k the range will equal um, that y value because it's the lowest y value to infinity the other case is if it opens downward then this is the highest um, y value so then in that case, the range goes from the bottom, negative infinity, up to this value, which is k. So we just need to know one of two things. We need to know, does it open upward or does it open downward, okay? If a is positive or greater than zero, then it opens upward. If a is negative or less than zero, then it opens downward, okay? So in this case, we have a positive 3, which means it's going to open upward, okay? Which means that my range is going to be that y value going up to infinity. I just need to figure out what that y value is. So let's do the math. Negative b over 2a. So that's negative 30 over 6, which is negative 5. And k is what I get when I plug in negative 5. So I'm just typing it in my calculator over here and I get negative 3. So my range is going to be from negative 3 to infinity. In this problem, the a value is negative, so it's going to be opening downward. So then my range is going to go from negative infinity at the bottom to this k value at the top. So then let's figure out what that k value is. Negative b over 2a is negative 8 over 2 times negative 2, so I end up with a positive 2. K is what I get when I plug in positive 2. And so I'm going to use my calculator for that. And I get negative 1. So my range here is from negative infinity to negative 1. And that's the only thing that we need to do with this. So we're all set.